What's up guys? In this video, what I wanna do is handle the top algebra mistakes that I see students make with exponents. So it doesn't matter if you're just starting algebra or if you're already in the calculus, these are mistakes that happen over and over them. In this video, I'm gonna cover six of them, but instead of just showing you what not to do, I'm also going to work on what you need to do to be able to overcome these mistakes. So the first mistake that we're gonna look at is when we have like a quantity with two numbers, you know, separated by addition or subtraction, being raised to a power. So in this example, we have a plus b quantity squared. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that students will make is they will distribute this two to the a and to the b. So therefore, they'll get an a squared plus a b squared. Do not do that, okay? Remember, a plus b squared, what this means is going to be an a plus b times an a plus b. And what that means is we need to now go ahead and apply our FOIL, right? So a times a, a times b, b times a and b times b, or to the distributive property, basically multiplying everything times everything. So when we do that, what we're now gonna get is an a squared plus a a b plus a b a plus a b squared. And now these two terms, doesn't really matter. We can just go ahead and combine them together because it doesn't really matter the order that they're being multiplied, right? Four times three is the same as three times four. So therefore I get an a squared plus a two a b. We can combine those together plus a b squared. So that is the correct version. Do not do a squared plus b squared. This is a lot more work. I think that's where a lot of times students will make the mistakes that they wanna to work too fast, but you do need to make sure you expand it out. Okay, now the next example is basically kind of similar to what we just did, uh, but now it's gonna be when we have an exponent being raised to power. And again, a lot of times students will do is they'll confuse this with the other properties of exponents, basically the product property, which means we're going to add our two powers. So we'll see a cubed um, raised to the second power and they say, oh, that's gonna be an a to the fifth power. But that is not correct, because again, just like we did in the previous example, when I have a cubed squared, what that means is an a cubed times an a cubed, right? And so a cubed times a cubed, and remember the rules of exponents say when you multiply your two exponents with the same base, you then add the powers. So therefore, this is going to be an a to the sixth power. Now, the next mistake actually explains how we got to our last mistake. So if I had like a cubed times a squared, a lot of times what students will do is they'll now multiply the powers because they see multiplication, right? So let's say, oh, well, let's just go ahead and take that to a to the sixth power. But no, that is not correct. If you remember in the previous example, when we multiply exponents, we add the powers, okay? And the reason why that works is, again, you can just kind of rewrite a cubed times a squared, right? I can rewrite a cubed as an a times a times a, and that's gonna be times an a squared, which is a times a. And what I want you to see is this is a multiplied by itself how many times? Five times. That's why we can just simply add the powers to get to our answer. Now, another mistake that students will make when we have our power is, let's say we have two times a cubed, again, squared right? And now what they'll do here is they'll say, well, remember, I remember the power rule, right? When I have a cubed squared, that's going to be a a to the sixth power. So then they'll just say, well, this is now going to be a two, a to the sixth power. And they got it partially right. But it's very important that when you have a, an expression that's separated by multiplication, you need to raise each and every one of those terms to that power, right? So this is not going to be correct. Basically, what you need to do is, again, just kind of think about this. A two a cubed is a two a cubed times a two a cubed. It's so important to recognize that is what the power is providing is repeated multiplication. So now when I'm multiplying this, I have two times two, which is going to give me a four. And then I have an a cubed times an a cubed, which is going to be, remember, add the powers, which is going to be an a to the sixth power. So another way to think about this is you can actually just take this power two and distribute it to both of your terms that are separated by multiplication. Okay. Now our next example is actually very much related to the first example. And that would be like, if I have an a squared, plus a b squared. All right, now a lot of students, what they'll wanna do in this case, is they'll say, oh, well then I can take the square root of a squared, that's just gonna be a, right? So that's gonna be an a plus b. Or unfortunately, we cannot distribute the square root across addition and subtraction. And the reason why this is similar to the previous example, because remember radicals can be written as a rational power. So therefore I can also write this as an a squared plus b squared raised to the one half power. So what we talked about in that first example is you cannot distribute the one half to both of those terms. That only works across multiplication and division, not addition and subtraction. So therefore this is the answer. And there's really nothing you can do in this example. You could either write it like this or you could write it as a rational power. And that's very similar to the last example that we get to when a lot of times students will see if they have like one over a a to the negative second power plus a b over to the negative second power. And a lot of times what students will say is they remember, oh, when you have a negative power, you just rewrite it as it's reciprocal, right? So they say, oh, well that's the same thing as an a squared plus a b squared. And no, unfortunately that does not work because you notice that the a and the b are both in the denominator and they're separated by addition. So the only thing we really could do in this case, we could rewrite them as individual fractions. I could rewrite this as a one over a and then over here as a one over b. But if I wanted to go ahead and simplify this, it's gonna get a little bit more dicey. And that would basically just be my simplified form. Now you notice it's a fraction. And guess what? Students make mistakes on fractions all the time. Students hate fractions. So in my next video, that's exactly what I wanna handle. The top algebra mistakes that students make with 
with fractions. Go and check out that video now. And if you want more resources or more examples, go and check out the playlist and information I have for you down below. Cheers.